Conor Gallagher, box-to-box sensation capable of challenging Jude Bellingham or overhyped, soon-to-be, Chelsea reject? One area where Gallagher already seems to be exceeding Jude Bellingham is his composure inside the box. Bellingham has never scored more than three goals in a season, yet the Chelsea youngster already seems to have got six goals from inside the penalty area alone. He does have a long-range strike in his luck and I expect this to continue to develop in time, but it's inside the box where he comes alive. Good timing of run, good awareness of gaps and an ability to get his body into a good body position to strike first time. He's also got a half-decent weaker foot as well. To take his game to the next level, he needs to get better at making decisions. He fails to spot an option here. And as we've seen with Marcus Rashford, this is not something that you can guarantee is going to develop with age. Here, he gets blinded to the options around him and takes the shot. Nevertheless, he is an above-average box-to-box goal threat, as we can see compared to his rivals. And whilst he isn't going to be better than Mason Mount in the attacking sense, he's comfortably exceeding the likes of Jude Bellingham and John McGinn. Statistically, Gallagher is a below-average long passer. He's miles behind the likes of Jude Bellingham, Henderson, Goretzka in terms of how accurate he is with his long passing. And yet, if we look at him closely, look at the way he hits this ball. He's got wonderful technique. Here again, picks up the ball, spots the run, and he hits a wonderfully weighted and backspinned pass to Zaha. So clearly the range of his passing, there's no problem with it. Again, under pressure here, spots a forward pass and executes it to perfection. I think the biggest problem is that he has a tendency to force the Hollywood pass, and that's why his completion numbers are so low. In terms of location, the majority of Gallagher's dribbling takes place in wider areas, which is why I think he'd be perfect for Gerrard's 4-3-2-1 system or as a wide midfielder in a diamond. He's a rare combination of agility and strength and this allows him to slide between players and then power through once the gap opens up. And he can also act as a useful focal point in possession because he can use his strength to lean on defenders like he does here, shield it and then get the cross in or get his team up the field. One area where he needs to improve is his ball carrying from deeper areas. He can become clumsy. It's an area of the pitch which is fraught with danger it invites counter pressing statistically he's an above average dribbler for a box-to-box midfielder in a technical sense and look how efficient he is there with his high completion rate but one of the major issues is that he's not completing enough dribbles he's not progressing the game enough and that's either a tactical issue or it's him not being active enough in the build-up phase In terms of creativity, as we can see from his assist per 90 numbers, he's not someone who's as creative as a Jude Bellingham from open play or even a Jordan Henderson. His high successful chance creation numbers come from the fact that he's Palace's number one set piece taker. Now, he does have vision. As we can see, his spotting runs here. He can pass between the lines. He can even spot runners from deep. So he has got it all in his locker. Um, especially out wide, he's someone who reminds me a bit of Jordan Henderson. He's comfortable in these wide areas, got a beautiful cross on him. But this is his problem, forcing the pass, never knowing when to reject the pass, and his weight of pass can be inconsistent as well. As we can see from the graphic, Gallagher's participation in the build-up is minimal. He fails to exert any real influence in deeper positions. A key issue is his positioning and his awareness of space. Here, he needs to be dropping deeper to open up an angle so he can see what's going on in front of him because he's got his back to goal as it were he's pressed from behind and forced to play the pass backwards here again doesn't really force that play forward goes backwards again so he's someone who's not really progressing the build-up here because he hasn't really built a picture in his head he's just forcing a pass forwards despite his height and seemingly combative nature Gallagher is not reliable in the air and in his own box he's lost more aerial duels than he has won whilst he can compete he's not winning headers clean and unlike a Scott McTominay he isn't providing enough breathing space to his defense from aerial bombardment he needs to demonstrate more authority in these type of situations and utilize his body more it seems like he can get out muscled whilst in the middle of a leap and that is a sign of not jumping with any real conviction and failing to tense his body sufficiently in anticipation of the contact. Now, he leaps well, but that is in situations where he knows he's likely to win the ball. When it's more of a 50-50, he jumps in hope rather than with surefire belief. Now, compare him to a Goretzka, he's miles behind 
but what's more concerning is his numbers compared to Gundogan and John McGinn, midgets. Defensively, Gallagher is a workhorse and he's not afraid to put in a challenge. He actively pursues the ball, but he isn't quite hitting the same numbers as your Freds, Hendersons or Kantes, though he's definitely more of a ball winner than a Jude Bellingham. He's happy to get back and cover his fullback, so he's quite professional in this respect. He's clearly a team player. Look at how he gets back there. And he's not afraid to make a last ditch challenge to keep his team in the game. This is his problem here. He has a tendency to dive in and underestimate certain opponents. Now, this is either down to immaturity or just a failure to read his opponent. Okay, so in this segment, we're going to take a look at what Conor Gallagher brings from a tactical perspective and what his favourite plays are. Um, Palace tend to line up in a 4-3-3. They can line up in a 4-1-4-1, but this is their favoured setup. And Gallagher, as you can see, is part of this midfield trio and he's usually the more advanced midfielder out of the trio. And if someone like Ayu has made an inwards run um, to support Benteke, Gallagher's the man who'll sort of come into this wide area here, get down here and put crosses in either towards the near post, uh, cutbacks or towards the far post. So he's got a very good crossing ability and Palace tend to make use of it. In terms of positional rotations, if Ayu is the one who sort of stays out wide and he's man-marked by his left back, Gallagher will either play the underlapping role here, uh, a bit like how Jordan Henderson does it for Mo Salah, and get crosses in towards that far post. He's got a very good first-time whip and what you'd expect to see is someone like Zaha or Benteke get towards that far post and make, make use of that. Now, what this area of the pitch also allows Gallagher to do um, is make runs into the box. And that's where he's got majority of his goals from, from making late runs into the box. And while he's running in towards goal, he can also find intricate passes. Um, so that's a favoured play of Gallagher as well. Um, if you do see clips of Gallagher um, in terms of positioning down the left flank, the reason why is because he takes corners from both flanks. Um, when, the when the play breaks up, it tends to find him down this left-hand side where he keeps that position um, and he can also put crosses in from that area as well. Now, if we have a situation where Ward's gone forward um, on the overlap for Ayu and Gallagher sort of held his position more, um, because it might be too tired to make a long busting run forward. Um, he's usually the man who will protect that right side of the flank and make sure that he delays this winger and gives time for Ward and the rest of the team to sort of get back and get into position. Um, so he's someone who is willing to uh, sacrifice his more attacking instincts uh, for the good of the team. But what I would say is that he's better in the opponent's half than he is his own half. Uh, and nothing really um, makes that more explicit than this area of the pitch here. Now, in this area, Gallagher can make quite a few defensive errors. Sometimes his reading of the game isn't particularly good. And also in terms of the build-up phase, uh, when he's put under pressure to receive the ball here, instead of wriggling his way out and then playing a ball out to say, are you or one of the forward three, he tends to play it safe and pass it back and sort of pass on that responsibility. And that's something which... If he wants to go uh, and play with the big boys, you know, the top level midfielders, they are not found wanting in this area of the pitch where most of the counter pressing takes place. So that's something to watch out for uh, with Gallagher's development going forwards. In conclusion, I do not see Gallagher being a good fit at Chelsea under Tuchel. In a 3-5-2, there's no natural position for him to feature in and it's going to take a regime change for him to get a chance. In terms of other big clubs, I think he could have a Jordan Henderson-esque development journey and end up a bigger team. But the reality is that he's not quite as naturally talented as a Jude Bellingham and his route to the top is going to be tougher. A shrewder move would be to go to a club like Aston Villa, where he could be a mainstay under Gerrard's new regime and lead that club into Europe. For me, he's too raw in the build-up phase and too raw in terms of killer passing to warrant a starting role for a bigger team. For England, they don't have an abundance of riches in midfield and there's no reason why he can't be an important player for Southgate, whether as a starter or even as a bench player and his combative nature will be a good fit. In conclusion, 
Not a surefire star headed for the top, but if Gallagher shows the right attitude, he could be a coach's dream and that's why he can't be written off as a reject.